Tonight, this woman is being held on no bond. She's accused tonight of shooting and killing her own terminally ill husband in a Daytona Beach hospital. Police say that Ellen Gilland shot her husband, 77-year-old Jerry Gilland, as part of what was supposed to be a murder-suicide pact. Watch News Tonight, Governor Gettigas has the latest from court and spoke to a doctor who was also inside the hospital when those gunshots rang out. A doctor who was in the hospital when the shooting happened tells us everyone is still pretty shaken up by the whole thing, trying to process what happened. The suspect, Ellen Gilland, faced a judge Sunday and was told she will be held without bond. Ellen Gilland slowly makes her way inside the courtroom Sunday before the judge. So this little old glider lady doesn't get a bond. But fucking Pookie. <laughs> Fucking shoot somebody down in cold blood and he gets some. I mean, she shot her husband that was like dying himself. Yeah. Like Crazy. maybe that was what he no wanted. Bond. Yeah. Ellen Gillen slowly makes her way inside the courtroom Sunday before the judge announces her charges. You have been charged with one count of premeditated first degree murder and three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Gillen is being held in Volusia County under no bond. Daytona Beach police say she shot and killed her husband, 77-year-old Jerry Gilland, in his hospital room on the 11th floor of Advent Health Saturday morning. Officials say he was terminally ill and that he and Ellen made a pact three weeks ago to go through with a murder-suicide if his health worsened. One of the staff came running in like, you know, clearly very agitated, saying this is not a drill. Dr. Joshua Horenstein was on the ground floor, the hospital's emergency department. He says at first, nurses got a code yellow alert. We don't really know, like, what do we do with a lockdown? And then came a code silver, which he says meant shelter in place. At that point, thinking it's a little bit more serious, but still not sure what to do. He and another nurse got into a supply closet and waited. After cleared from sheltering, he says the staff had to stay put on their floors for hours. I still had 20 patients to see in the hospital on various floors to go around on that I hadn't gotten to do, and they, it was just shut down. Tonight, many wondering how a gun made it into a hospital. Hospitals tend to be open, as you said, and they tend to um, have a lot of entrances and exits. Ben Scaglione has been in healthcare security for over 20 years and says screening everyone is usually a difficult and expensive process. When you have a metal detect, you have to staff it. Historically, it's, um, hospitals have had it in their emergency department because that seems to be the most volatile area. In healthcare, generally, you train them um, the same scenario, run, hide, and fight. It might have been nice to know if I got a shelter in place alarm, like what that what I should have done. Like, because I've never personally, I don't believe maybe it was part of a video, you know, training I did 10 years ago, but I, nothing that strikes memory of what I was actually supposed to do. We are still waiting to learn if the hospital had yeah, any security nothing. weapon detection in place and how a gun made it into the hospital room. Reporting in Daytona Beach, Sonega Vergetigas, Wash 2 News. Dude, I door dash to hospitals all the time. Those nurses order daily and shit. And I'm in Arizona. You know, we're constitutional carrying crap. I've never once seen a security guard screening people at any entrance ever. Am I crazy? I've never seen that shit either in any city. Like, I used to work at Panera Bread that was, like, attached to, like, the U of L hospital. And, like, yeah, I used to walk in there like nothing. Well, I think more that, tonight about a deadly illegal. shooting in Orlando. If she would have had that shit in writing, about he would have been, she would have been fine. Learning more tonight about a deadly shooting in Orlando. We first brought you this story as breaking news Friday, and now 34-year-old Willie Shade is being held on no bond. 30 what? That dude 34? My God. A nigga named Willie. This story is breaking news Friday, and now 34-year-old Willie Shade is being held on no bond after being charged with first-degree murder with a firearm in connection to the death of Zedekiah Lafayette. Investigators say that Shade was walking with the victim and another man at Maxwell Terrace on West Arlington Street when he threw Lafayette to the ground, shot him, and ran away. Hours later, Shade returned to the scene. Detectives were still there and took Shade into custody. <laughs> 
Is Florida cracking down on these guys now? Because he didn't get no bond either. Wow. Yeah, that's – I don't know. Maybe. That's I, like the second or third one in a row, I think. Like, I haven't heard too much down about there. Florida, for real, for real. Mm. Now when I think about it. Wow. Um. 10, 12 people were arrested yesterday as part of a major drug bust in Volusia County. The sheriff's office says 12 people were all arrested after a search warrant was executed in New Smyrna Beach. The investigation began in August with multiple complaints about drug activity at a home on Colonial Drive. The fucking cops picked up a ski resort. So, gliders. I mean, gliders to me. You think it was meth? It's probably was meth. Wow. Heroin. And more meth. We're going to see the teeth. Yeah, well, I got to see, I gotta see teeth. Shit teeth. I got shit teeth. <laughs> I'm going with meth. And yeah, I never did a drug. I'm looking at Charles Powers, and I'm like, yeah, that's meth. I would go with the same team, meth. These some rough-looking gliders, man. Stab the shit out of you. These are some rough. Um, is a, that mean, was sad is that me. that first guy on the right there. He was probably only about thirty five. The girl in the middle, I smashed though. Really? What's that? Your Felicia? Dillas? That's Felicia. That, that's a day. brave man. Your Dillas so Sores? Yeah, smash it. I got a thing for yellow bones. A man's got to know his weakness. <laughs> Gets me every time. Colonial Drive and multiple overdoses. During the search just yesterday, deputies said that they found meth, heroin, fentanyl, six guns, and more than 500 bullets. So they were almost out of ammo. That's Only like did two weeks for Mossy right there. 500 bullets. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, in weeks, man, they got him off the streets. It's like after it breaks my heart every time I see a Convicted video where they destroy those beautiful weapons, though. Yeah. Uh I was just gonna say those Convicted white felon people. is accused of robbing a Dollar Tree store in Daytona Beach. Howard Eady is now charged with armed robbery and aggravated battery. Police tell us that he was wearing a mask Wednesday night when he allegedly went into the store on Bellow Road just before closing. He's accused of pointing a gun at two employees and forcing them to take him into the office and open the safe. Now, at one point, police say he then grabbed one employee by the arm and shoved another with a gun. Fortunately, no one was injured. <laughs> You know, just a just a just a Dollar Tree robbery, a run in the mill Dollar Tree robbery. Nothing to see there. Um, yeah, this little area down here is pretty. Um, whoa, a lot of fucking. Also new tonight, twin brothers are in jail, accused in a robbery and sexual battery. They tell us that Stephen and Justin Montijo, both twins, walked up to a woman waiting for a lift home outside an Osceola County bar last month. They threatened her and got into her, the car with her when it arrived. Now, when they got to her apartment, the two attacked her and ransacked the apartment. They are now facing charges tonight, including robbery, false imprisonment, and sexual battery. <laughs> You're not sending us your best, man. Some bad hombres. Yeah, it's some bad hombres, man. Uh, they should get the death penalty. Yeah, that was a rough one, man. You um, know what? They're, they're I brought up the though. hammer time the other day, and I didn't. I don't know if anybody liked it or not. Hmm. See, it, oh, down in Orlando and Florida, there's more Cubans than Mexicans, and, yeah. and, and those two are totally different. Totally different vibes. Yeah. Um, oh, here goes a good one. An ambush and attempted carjacking led to a shootout at a Seminole County bar. Now the man accused in the attack is dead. West Shoes Anika Hope joins us live near George's Tavern along 11th Street and French Avenue. Anika, police say the suspect was waiting for his victim. 
Yeah, investigators say the employee was coming out of the bar to her car, but a man was waiting inside a portable toilet outside. They say that man ambushed her, but her friend was outside, saw what happened, and fired his gun. I heard a pow, 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 and then I kind of like a hesitation, and then I'm not, I don't know if it was another couple of them. This woman asked us not to identify her. Sanford police say those shots were fired at George's Tavern off French Avenue around 2 a.m. Thursday. It had to have been at least three or four that I actually might have heard, but it woke me up out of a dead sleep. Police said an employee was closing up the bar for the night. She had a male friend waiting in the parking lot for her to finish her shift and get in her car safely. But police say someone else was waiting too. Investigators say surveillance footage shows a man hit in a portable toilet near the woman's car. They say he ambushed and attempted to attack her when she tried to get in her car. But the male friend waiting nearby saw what was happening and shot the attacker. Police say the What do you think about that, Marcy? This is that's your type of story, Marcy. It's a Marcy special. <laughs> I think Homeboy she- gets the key to the city. <laughs> I think it's good she had a friend with her um, watching her back. See, that's what I'm talking about, Marcy. Like, you actually have to shoot the guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it jumps out at you fast. Like, that guy had no idea that somebody was going to jump out of a porta potty and attack that woman. When, when I've had women do that, what they say, you just make sure I get to my car safe. You know, you just stand right there, you know, and then you, when she hit the horn when she's about to pull off, and then you're going to it, a thousand out of a thousand times, nothing ever happens. You can do that a thousand times, and nothing will ever happen until the time that guy jumps out of a water party. And you got to pull that gun out, and you have to actually shoot him. Would you thought I was always talking about just brandishing a gun? No, what I'm talking about is like you make it seem like it's so easy. Like that guy jumps out of a porta potty. You have your brain has to register that. Yeah. It's the same way you think about avoiding a car accident. You play it, you, mm. you play you well look, you play it in mm. your mind what kind of stuff can go wrong when you're on the road. And you think about you you know, you, you think about your your own reaction time, what your level what your skill level is. And you think, and you have to figure out. You figure out over time before it before it ever happens. Can I react fast enough to avoid a car? To brake fast enough? To, to mm. downshift? And it's the same. It's the same method that you use with uh, with defensive shooting. You think about if mm. someone comes around the corner. If there's someone I can identify, they have a weapon. Is it really a gun? Um, is there a chance that I could actually take a shot and survive? Are there any other people around? Could there be people who who could get in my way? Would I be able to get a clear shot? And you think about it enough times, and you practice, you know, and you practice, you know, operating. You practice operating with whatever you're, whatever you're carrying, to where it becomes, um, to where it becomes muscle memory. And then when it happens, you quickly, uh, you, you basically, you do all that calculus in your mind right there on the spot, and instantaneously you act. But that's because you're, that's only because you thought it through all the your time. Your brain shuts happen. off, and your adrenal system takes over. Your muscle memory. Yeah. Mm. Near the I avoid a lot, I avoid a lot of car accidents. They that say way. he am- mm. ambushed and attempted to attack her when she tried to get in her car. But the male friend waiting nearby saw what was happening and shot the attacker. Police say the man who attacked her died. I know people that go over there that are my friends. My friends could have been in there. Investigators are calling this an attempted carjacking. Right now, no one is facing charges. George's Tavern told us they did not want to comment, but customers said this was a surprise at a place where they always felt safe. This is really a shock. Very, really a shock. Now, police have not said if the man who died was armed or not. They're still working to identify who the man is at this time. They're also asking... Any- oh, oh, what if it's a sudden man? <laughs> It seems like this is a white area, but what if it's a sun man that just came over there to prey on them? Then you now you got real problems, you know. I guess, but you know, why take a chance? 
Because it's easier. It's easier to prey on them than to prey on the, the dudes in your neighborhood. So if you just try to get your experience up, they're the best target. I hope this ain't no sudden. Anyone man. with information to call Sanford Police or Crime Line. In Sanford, Anika Hope, West 2 News. Sanford. So you know they got some sons out there in Sanford. Wow. Uh-oh. Big trouble. And so today we empower parents in 